Good evening and thanks for joining us live at 5. I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Mabel Garcia. A trial date has been set for the two teens accusing a crime spree that included what police say was the intentional hit and run killing of a retired police chief officer, Andreas Probst. In court today, the teen suspects did not show any concern. Our Jay Wan Jung was there in the courtroom and also spoke to the family of Probst after the proceedings. The family of Andreas Probst says the behavior of the two murder suspects makes them angry. Despite the serious felony charges each are facing, the pair were all smiles in court Tuesday. So what exactly is going through the minds of teenagers out joyriding when they decide, hey, I get it, let's hit people on bicycles and we'll record it and post it on social media. That's exactly what happened here back on August 14th in Las Vegas where Jesus Ayala, 18, and Yasmir Key, 16, were riding around in the car with Ayala driving and decided they're going to be criminals. They didn't think they were going to be killers, but they were definitely going to be criminals because they thought it was funny. So they mowed down a man riding his bicycle in the bicycle lane, hitting him, throwing him from his bike and ultimately killing him. And they have zero remorse. They had no remorse that day. And in court, at their next court appearance, they laughed, they gave the finger to the deceased family, and they showed that they could not care less that they took a life. As a matter of fact, I don't even think they care about their own life. Now. The crime incomprehensible, the defendant's attitude in court reprehensible. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Loftus. I'm Kirsten Joyce. Two teens in court accused of killing a cyclist. The 8 News Now investigators first to bring you additional evidence from the alleged crime spree. Vanessa Murphy in the courtroom this morning as there were some tense moments. The wife and daughter of victim Andy Probst say they believe the teen's behavior here in court today shows they have zero respect and zero remorse. They're just kind of trying to mad dog us and intimidate us, which didn't work. Jesus Ayala and Jameer Keys smiling at the widow and daughter of Andy Probst as they leave the courtroom Tuesday. The teens are accused of intentionally hitting the 64-year-old retired California police chief. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. They're charged with murder and additional felonies in connection with an August 14th crime spree. Police say they also hit this 72-year-old cyclist that morning. <laughs> He survived a trial now scheduled for September of next year. These guys, they did not respect the court whatsoever. The teens appear to communicate with each other at times covering their faces and also laughing. So as you can see, they could get they have zero remorse. I don't think they have anything in their head that can make them comprehend the crime that they committed looking and laughing at the decedent's family with not a care in the world, but looking around the courtroom, probably for their own family members. How do such young people become so evil? The number one factor, as far as I'm concerned, is their parents. Where were their parents? Did they even attempt to raise these boys the right way? It looks to me like they didn't. The 18 year old with the tattoos on his face, looking like a tough guy, he wants to be a gangster, and the 16 year old trying to be that way. But I believe, because I've seen this all too many times, the 16 year old was scared shit. He knows most likely he's gonna get convicted of murder and he's going to prison for the rest of his life. So he can act all tough and look and laugh. But again, in my 20 plus year law enforcement career, I have seen this way too many times. These kids think they're something. They want to be in a gang. They want to be badass. When in reality, they're just scared kids. Now, what made the 16 year old get with that other nitwit? I have no idea. But the bottom line is it starts in the home. If the parents can't control what these kids do, and I get that once they're out driving, the parents have no control, but raising their kids to be responsible is a number one priority, isn't it? 
That's how I raise my kids, and I'm pretty sure you do the same thing. What is going on in a society where two kids joyriding would decide, let's hit people on bicycles and see what happens? And then you're going to see how there's zero upstairs. They have nothing. They have nothing in their head. Not a care in the world. Is riding in the police car, one of them actually told the officer transporting him to the jail that he's going to get a slap on the wrist. He'll be out in 30 days for a hit and run. He does not care. Is it really that serious? Yeah, it is. I'll be out in like 30 days. i bitch. You might be out of juvie in 30 days and move over to an adult jail. Because that's how bad it is. It's just a f***ing uh, hit and run slap on the wrist. Maybe at that time, he didn't know he killed somebody. But even when he found out, he still had zero remorse. And the judicial system now has to make a point and make an example and hope that a jury will convict these two criminals because that's what they are, okay? They're street thugs who want to be tough guys and they're going to act the fool and they took somebody's life out for an innocent bike ride. This is the society we live in where kids go out and they commit heinous acts of violence and most people, especially prosecutors, give them a slap on the wrist and let them go. And that's exactly what these kids thought. They thought they were going to get spanked, maybe do a little time in juvie for the 16-year-old, and the 18-year-old would have did a little time in an adult prison, and that would have been it. But nope, they're in an adult prison. They're being tried for murder, intentional murder, because that's what it was. Now, the, the defense attorneys are probably going to say, Your Honor, they had no idea that they were going to take a life. They were just messing around. They didn't want to kill anybody. Well, what makes them think that if they're driving in a car, which is essentially a dangerous weapon, and there's someone riding a bicycle, what makes them think that if they hit this person, they're not potentially going to take their life? It's obvious, it's, it's, it's beyond comprehension that they would think that they were just going to hit the bike, the guy was going to fall, they were going to make their video go viral because they're fucking idiots, and then they would be all set. That's the youth of today. We see it all over the place. Most lately, we see it in Chicago, the street takeovers. We see it in Philly. We see it in California. We see it in New York, and so on. And in Las Vegas... Teens drive around and hit innocent people on bicycles. The court system needs to do something to make an example of these two and make it a point to show everyone else that if you commit such heinous, unnecessary crimes and a crime of violence, because that's what this was, you are going to pay the ultimate price and you are never ever going to walk free on the streets again because those kids deserve nothing less okay nothing less i don't think they have any brains whatsoever i don't think their parents care less about what they were doing because obviously they didn't try to raise them right and our naysayers will say you know the parents tried but they couldn't do anything they ran with street gangs or whatever that's inexcusable as a parent, you have a responsibility to raise your children somewhat properly. And in this case, there was zero supervision. There was zero morals instilled, nothing. The parents are to blame for this violent crime. And I know the parents cannot be charged, but they should feel some remorse for what their kids were out doing, okay? We hear it all the time. Oh, the parent didn't know he had guns in his room. The parent didn't know he was making pipe bombs. He hid them under his bed. You're the parent. They're living in your house. Go in their room and see what they're doing. If the door's locked, you make them unlock it. Okay? That's how things like this are prevented. That's how shootings are prevented. By the parents getting involved and finding 
the hidden weapons or whatever. Maybe they're taking notes. Maybe they have a plan. I don't know if these two nitwits had a plan, but maybe they did. And if the parents cared a little more about their kids, this may have been prevented. Probably not, but it could have been. And that's it. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'd appreciate that. Hit that like button because it helps my channel grow. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Share this video if you will. I'd also appreciate that. I hope everybody's healthy and safe and I'll see you soon. Have a great night.